Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to History Calling, where I bring you new videos every Friday on all aspects of the past. Today, in honour of International Women's Day, I'm going to give you my pick for the top 10 most amazing women of history. This was an incredibly difficult list to put together and it's certainly not definitive. It should just be taken as some lighthearted fun and a way to start a conversation in the comments where I'm looking forward to reading what other women you would include in your own lists. So that it didn't become overwhelming for me, I've set a couple of ground rules. First, as this is a history video, I'm only listing women who are already dead, though for those of you who stay till the end, I'll name the three women living at the moment who I think are going to go down in history as amazing. Second, I'm not picking women just on the basis of how powerful or famous they were during their lifetimes, otherwise I'd just be giving you a list of queens, empresses and famous actresses, but based on whether they did something amazing with their lives that had a long-term influence. In other words, all the women on this list have changed the world in some way or other, even if they didn't know it at the time. Okay then, with all that in mind, let's roll the intro and get started. Number 10. Diana, Princess of Wales There are few people in the world who don't know Diana's name or recognise her picture. To me, what makes her amazing though is not her fame, beauty or the notoriety which surrounded so much of her life and death, but her great compassion and the way in which she harnessed the global interest in her for her charity work. Something which I think is often lost in the mix when the Princess of Wales is discussed is just how groundbreaking her philanthropic efforts were. In particular, her support of AIDS sufferers and charities and efforts to destigmatize the disease were world-changing in the 1980s when fear of the illness was at its height, and her influence has undoubtedly changed how it has been viewed and dealt with ever since. For that alone, she would have earned a place on my list, though her charitable efforts extended much further, and at the time of her death, she was also bringing attention to the problem of landmines, another incredibly worthy but at the time overlooked cause. We can only wonder what else she would have accomplished if only she'd had more time. Number 9. Anne Frank Anne Frank has greatly influenced the way many look at and remember the Holocaust, helping to ensure that the terrors and suffering the Nazis inflicted are not downplayed or forgotten. Forced into hiding as a 13-year-old child because she and her family were Jews, Anne was ultimately murdered along with her mother and sister at the Bergen-Belsen concentration camp at the age of just 15, mere weeks before it was liberated in 1945. She has since become world famous due to her amazing talent as a writer, as shown in the posthumously published diary she kept while she was living in the secret annex, as she called it, in this house in Amsterdam. Her words and influence have long outlived Anne herself and given a voice to the millions of other Holocaust victims who didn't have a chance to leave a record of their stories. It is just one of the many tragedies about her that she never had the chance to see the great difference she made to the world and how much her life and diary have helped to promote compassion, kindness and tolerance. If you'd like to read her diary, and I strongly encourage you to do so, I'll leave a link to it in the description box below. Number 8. Margaret Thatcher Born in 1925, Thatcher was the first female Prime Minister of the United Kingdom and held the post for 11 years from 1979 until 1990, itself a record-breaking continuous term of office. Love her or loathe her, she broke that glass ceiling of a woman holding the top office in the UK and though many of her policies were deeply unpopular and remain controversial, she actually earned the nickname the Iron Lady for her tough approach, you cannot deny that the dual feats of rising from a grocer's daughter to be the first female Prime Minister then holding the post for that length of time were amazing and not something that just anyone could have done. Her life and achievements helped to fundamentally alter the way the concept of women holding the highest political power was viewed around the world. She died in 2013. Number 7. Grace Hopper A proper genius, Grace Hopper is someone you may never have heard of, but she was one of the parents of modern computing. Born in New York City in 1906, Grace earned a PhD in maths from Yale, then taught at Vassar College. She joined the Navy Reserve during World War II and was ultimately responsible for developing computer programming language which is still in use today. She held the rank of Rear Admiral lower half in the Navy and died on New Year's Day 1992. 
She was buried at Arlington Cemetery. Her many awards include having a college named after her at Yale, a posthumous Presidential Medal of Freedom awarded in 2016, and in what is perhaps the ultimate accolade of the 21st century, a Google Doodle for her 107th birthday in 2013. The link for that is in the description if you'd like to take a look. Number 6. Queen Anne Boleyn the second wife of Henry VIII, what makes Anne amazing was her intelligence and her success as a woman in a man's world. She proved herself incredibly savvy, at least at first, in managing the men around her, most notably Henry VIII, so that despite not being of royal birth or a great beauty, she rose to become Queen of England. Her long-term influence on the world, other than the fascination her story continues to inspire, stems from the fact that she encouraged Henry to break with Rome in order to marry her. This makes her a prime cause of the English Reformation, an event which would have ramifications for those living in England, Wales and Ireland for hundreds of years afterwards, when they were expected to convert and were punished, even killed, if they did not. The Reformation also had a dramatic effect on England's relations with foreign powers and ultimately on the development of Christian religion around the world for centuries to come, most especially Protestantism. Finally, it must also be said that Anne had amazing courage. When sent to the scaffold by her husband in 1536, she showed incredible poise in the face of death, so much so that even her enemies were impressed by it. Number 5. Marie Curie Born Maria Sklodowska in Warsaw, Poland in 1867, the life of Marie Curie as she became known after she moved to France and married Pierre Curie is one long list of amazing accomplishments, and her impact on science and the place of women in science lives on today. She was a pioneer researcher in the field of radioactivity, and despite the considerable sexism of her era, which almost cost her the nomination, in 1903 she became the first woman ever to win a Nobel Prize. It was for physics and was shared with her husband, who was also her research partner, and their fellow scientist Henri Becquerel. To date, she is also the only woman to win two Nobel Prizes, the second being in 1911 for chemistry in recognition of her discovery of the elements polonium, which she named after her native Poland, and radium. After Pierre's death, she became the first female professor at the University of Paris in 1906, and during World War I, she helped to establish a number of mobile radiography units so that injured soldiers could be x-rayed before surgery. The dangers of radiation and overexposure to x-rays were not understood during Curie's lifetime, however, and many think they contributed to her death in 1934, aged 66. One bizarre detail about her end, which you may not know, is that her body was and remains so radioactive that it's interred in a lead-lined coffin in the Pantheon Mausoleum in Paris. Likewise, her surviving papers, right down to her cookbooks, are so toxic that they have to be stored in lead-lined boxes in the Bibliothèque Nationale in Paris. They can only be handled whilst wearing protective clothing. They will remain too radioactive to handle without such clothing for another 1500 years. A reminder to those who see them of the magnitude of Curie's discoveries and of just how amazing her life was. Number 4. Florence Nightingale Born in the city of Florence, Italy in 1820 to British parents, Florence Nightingale was well-educated, travelled and very religious. She developed an interest in nursing and in 1853 became a superintendent to the Establishment for Gentlewomen During Illness in Upper Harley Street in London. When the Crimean War broke out in 1854, she was asked by the government to take a group of nurses to Scutari in Turkey to help care for the injured soldiers. She discovered filthy conditions and poorly organised staff, both situations she quickly remedied, proving herself an able and very tough administrator as well as an excellent nurse. She gained the name the Lady with the Lamp during this period thanks to her habit of coming round the wards at night to check on the patients. Upon her return to England, and despite bouts of serious illness which lasted for decades, she fought for full-scale reform of how injured soldiers were treated in the British Army and how workhouse infirmaries were run. She was also very concerned about how India, then still a British colony, was managed and what could be done to improve the living conditions of its people, and wrote papers and books on topics including the need to improve sanitation in hospitals, the design of hospital buildings and good nursing practices. She established the Nightingale Training School for Nurses in 1860 and her thoughts and advice on healthcare were respected around the world. Indeed, they were implemented by the U.S. Sanitary Commission during the American Civil War and by both sides during the Franco-Prussian War of 1870. The French and Prussians then honoured her separately in 1871. 
In November 1907, she was given the Order of Merit by King Edward VII, and the following year received the Freedom of London. She died at her home in the city in 1810. Her legacy lives on, however, most notably in the ways in which she shaped and improved attitudes towards hygiene and cleanliness in medical care and training for nurses. Her many posthumous accolades include hospitals named in her honour and the decision in the 1970s to feature her on British banknotes. More recently, during the pandemic, when new hospitals had to be erected in the UK, they were called Nightingale Hospitals, in her memory. Number 3. Emmeline Pankhurst One of the most famous suffragettes, Emmeline Pankhurst was committed to improving the lot of women and in particular to helping them gain the vote. Born Emmeline Goulden in 1858, she married Richard Pankhurst in 1878. After his death 20 years later, she formed the Women's Social and Political Union in 1903, which used increasingly militant tactics to push for the vote for women. Emmeline's views led to disagreements with some of her children and ultimately to multiple imprisonments, the first being in 1908 for obstruction in the House of Commons. Her militant actions continued, however, and her sister even died as a result of injuries sustained in a clash with police at Downing Street in 1910. Emmeline was imprisoned again for breaking the Prime Minister's windows with stones in 1912 and again for conspiracy, during which time she went on hunger strike and successfully resisted attempts to force feed her. She would continue in and out of prison many times over the next few years as she continued her fight for women's suffrage, damaging her health through additional hunger strikes. She travelled widely, including to America and France, spreading her message, and at last, in 1918, saw some significant progress when women over the age of 30 were granted the vote in the UK if they were householders, married to a householder, lived in a home for which the annual rent was £5 or more, or had graduated from a British university. Emmeline later moved to Canada, then France, and finally back to England, where she died on the 14th of June 1928 from influenza and septicemia. Less than three weeks later, a bill giving all women over 21 the right to vote on the same footing as men became law, thanks in large part to the efforts and sacrifices of this amazing woman over the course of the previous quarter century. So ladies, every time you cast a vote, spare a thought for Emmeline Pankhurst, who along with so many other suffragettes I don't have time to look at now, helped to make it possible. Number 2. Mary Wollstonecraft one of the original feminists, Wollstonecraft's ideas have paved the way for women's rights ever since she wrote them and arguably helped to ensure that it was possible for ladies like Florence Nightingale, Marie Curie, Grace Hopper and Emmeline Pankhurst to do the work that would in turn make them so well known. She ranks so highly on this list as her ideas have affected men and women all over the world and for more than two centuries. Born in London in 1759, her father was an abusive drinker who Mary later said she despised, while her mother greatly favoured her older brother Edward over Mary and the other children. Mary would complain later of the double standard she experienced in the family, saying that what was called spirit and wit in him, meaning her brother Edward, was cruelly repressed as forwardness in me. She received minimal formal schooling but was dedicated to improving her mind and acquired great knowledge through her own extensive reading. The family was increasingly poor and in an effort to make some money and because her attempts at governessing had fallen flat, Mary wrote and published Thoughts on the Education of Daughters in 1787, earning the sum of £10 which in modern currency equates to about £770. She also befriended a number of radical dissenters, a group of intellects who believed in the equality of the sexes, and ultimately gained employment through one of them writing for a journal named the Analytical Review. By the 1790s, she had become, according to Barbara Taylor, the best known female political writer in Europe. Her most famous work was the best-selling A Vindication of the Rights of Women, published in 1792, in which she advocated for equal rights for women. She died in September 1797 due to complications of childbirth, 11 days after the birth of her daughter. This little girl, named after her mother, would grow up to become the famous Mary Shelley, author of Frankenstein. An amazing family all round, I'd say. As promised, before I announce who my choice is for number one, here are a few women who I think will go down in history as being amazing for their contributions to the world. Malala Yousafzai Few people have ever taken the kind of adversity Malala faced and turned it into something so positive and world-changing. 
Having been shot in the head by terrorists in her native Pakistan in 2012, aged just 15, and because of her support for female education, Malala has recovered and gone on to study philosophy, politics and economics at the University of Oxford, from where she graduated in 2020, and moreover has become a powerful and influential voice in the fight for girls' education around the globe. At the age of just 17, she was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in December 2014, becoming the youngest ever Nobel laureate. Still only in her 20s, I'm sure that the best is still to come. Greta Thunberg One of the loudest and most effective voices against climate change, Greta Thunberg had achieved world recognition by the age of 15 thanks to her school strikes for climate, which she began in her native Sweden and which soon spread around the world. Never afraid to speak her mind and to stand up for what she believes in, even against world leaders, Ms Thunberg's influence is still growing and as the ramifications of climate change continue to be felt around the world, her influence will surely only get stronger. Vice President Kamala Harris At the time of creating this video, Kamala Harris has only recently been inaugurated as Vice President of the United States, but already she has broken not one, not two, but three glass ceilings. She is the first female VP in US history, the first black person to hold the post and the first Asian American to do so. Whatever she ends up doing next, and I kind of think that she's probably going to run for president at some point, Vice President, as she is at the moment, Harris, is surely one to watch for the history books. And so we come to my number one pick for the most amazing women in history. I've selected Rosa Parks. Born in 1913, Rosa Parks was a titan of the civil rights movement in the United States and a woman of amazing bravery and integrity. She is best remembered for refusing to give up her seat on a segregated bus to a white man in Montgomery, Alabama in 1955. In the deeply racist society of the American South at the time, this was an incredible move and showed great courage given the terrible treatment that black people were subjected to in that era. She was arrested and went on to help organize and support a boycott of the Montgomery buses by black people in protest at the racial segregation in place at the time. The boycott would ultimately last nearly a year and eventually the segregation law was revoked as it was unconstitutional. Rosa continued to be involved in the struggle for black rights for over four decades, but had to move out of Montgomery as her actions had lost her her job and she would go on to receive death threats for her efforts. It is this great personal risk to her life, a risk which she knowingly took every day for many years, which puts her in the number one slot. Though other women on this list were also exceptionally brave and knew their actions might lead to imprisonment and or mistreatment by society, none knowingly and willingly risked their lives day in, day out, year after year after year in the way that Rosa did. Remember that Martin Luther King, who Rosa knew, was murdered for fighting for equal rights for black people in America, so the threats against her life need to be taken seriously. She was given many awards over the course of her life, including the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 1996 and the Congressional Gold Medal in 1999. The same year Time magazine listed her as one of the most influential figures of the 20th century. She died in Detroit in 2005 and was further honoured for her extraordinary life by being allowed to lie in repose in the Capitol building in Washington DC. I could go on about Rosa all day, but as I don't have time in this video, I'll leave links to her memoirs below as I don't think anyone can tell you her story better than she can. Well, that concludes my video. As I said at the beginning, I'm sure you'll have other women in mind who you would have liked to have seen here, and this certainly shouldn't be taken as a definitive list, but rather as a jumping off point to start a conversation. Let me know in the comments section below who else you would include if you were putting your own list together. I'll be back next week with a new video, but until then, I think all the women here would agree with me when I say it's important to keep learning.